What is going on guys? I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I have really been looking forward to this video. I kept putting it off um, and every time I got reminded of it, I would forget about it again. But this is probably my all time favorite like subset in Pokemon, both because of value, the colors, how I found it, uh, the story of finding this in a collection. Um, but honestly, it's just magnificent, everything about it. And we're, we're gonna go over all of that. Uh, so let me introduce to you guys uh, the first subset that Pokemon ever released, um, Southern Islands. And this is a binder set. This is actually the sheath. Uh, there are binders all online, but this is actually the sheath, the original uh, cover and the binder, which is really hard to get both of these together. Um, and I'm gonna talk about how I found these originally. But um, in Japan, this set came out, I think in 99. Uh, or even sooner than that. But in the US, this set came out in 2001. In Japan, this set had six packs of three pack cards. And in the US, it just released as an 18 card subset. Um, also, in the US, it was probably, in my opinion, way more popular because of the just the colors and the way the binder and the package of everything uh, incredibly well marketed and just an awesome looking piece of history. Uh, for me, this is just one of the all-time like peak items that I have in my collection. It's not even like a super valuable item, but it's just really, really cool. And I do have some things like that that I've held on to uh, that I, I easily could have just put this up for an auction and let it go. But this was, when I found this, I was like, I know I found something special here because I hadn't seen anything like it before. But even when I did see it, I knew that it was special and I'm pretty sure that I had seen or heard someone talk about it before I saw it. So I was really excited to find it in a collection. Um, in fact, I'll just say that right now. Uh, there was a gentleman that I was talking to on eBay and we actually ended up meeting here in Charlotte. They were also uh, in the Charlotte area and they met me with a big blue bin, which if you go way back in my video history, it would be probably impossible to find this amongst 700 videos. But I have a video where I actually got this Southern Islands binder uh, as well as a ton of cards, holographics, uh, theme decks. It was really an awesome collection purchase. Um, and I sold a lot of that stuff since the theme decks and all the holographic cards. I kept all the bulk. I don't know why I kept all the bulk, but I just did. I love vintage bulk, but I also kept this Southern Islands binder. So let's go ahead and get straight into it. So the Southern Islands consist of the uh, Rainbow Island and the Tropical Island. Why does that matter? Because all of the cards will either feature a rainbow in the background or a tropical environment in the background. Just absolutely magnificent. All of them are hollow, at least if I remember this correctly. It's been a while since we broke this out. But let's go ahead and get this out. I just wanna show you guys uh, the front of mine real quick. Just so much detail with the orange and the green and the island and the blue. like. You have a lot of complementary colors working together here. And it's just, it's an absolutely incredible collection piece. And then here's the back of it. Absolutely incredible. I saw one of these sealed recently. And even though I paid like, I think I paid $400 for the entire bin of stuff that I got. So if you factor this into that, I probably paid honestly like $75 for this binder. It's really, really one of my best little pickups. Um, but uh, if I saw one of these sealed, I think it was, saw one of these sealed, I think it was $1,700 and it was pretty badly damaged. So I imagine a really mint condition sealed one probably might go for about two grand. Um, these cards can fetch, you know, a hundred, two hundred dollars if they're in gem mint PSA 10 condition. Um, and even if they're not in PSA 10 condition, some of them in PSA 9 can fetch 30 to 50 dollars, which is really cool. Uh, a lot of these are probably more on the PSA 9 side, but it's still really cool. All right, so I separated these. I separate, I don't know why I separated these. Oh my gosh, I separated these because I ended up picking up extras. So I just kept them with my Southern Island binder. That's so funny. Um, and then you have the original pack itself with the 18 cards. This is pretty incredible because this one actually has multiple swirls. Uh, all of these feature the Cosmos Hollow. So you have a swirl here and you have a swirl up here. This Mew is absolutely just magnificent. You can see Charizard, Pidgeot in the background. We're gonna go over that and and the, the rainbow in the background, but I just wanna show you guys what also is in here. So you have a postcard set this one is still unopened, which is really cool. 
I don't know what the other arts are because I haven't opened this up, but really, really beautiful postcard set just to keep for the history and the artwork. And then as we open it up on the inside, uh, this is, I don't want to open it up too much. I don't want to damage anything, but this is the inside graphic that you get. It basically shows where certain Pokemon are on the island. It's just really, really cool to see this. Obviously, you know, anybody can watch the old anime and get, you know, the old TV show and get a little bit of feel for, for this stuff. But it's just cool to see it on an old binder like this from 2001. Um, I think this was the only subset that Wizards of the Coast ever made. Um, and then over here, hey trainers, Pokemon League, join the game, start your own Pokemon journey, join the Pokemon trading card game league, play the game, make new friends. Um, I actually did meet a guy that ran a league and had an absolutely insane binder collection. And it, it's still, I, I still have trauma from not buying that binder. He was willing to sell it to me for five grand on the spot. And looking back on that, not even but a couple months ago, um, it's one of my biggest regrets so far in the hobby. Like, I don't even care if the value would have barely matched up or barely broken even. It would have been all this work to sell it. It's not always about the work or about the money. Sometimes it's just about really amazing opportunities, really amazing content. Man, I, I think, and I honestly think looking back that that binder was worth probably twice as much. So that was pretty, that's something that I, I look back on. But uh, yeah, that little league reminder, um, so it's also got the card lists here for the sets that were releasing at that time, all those Neo sets. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then it has the original binder pages, which obviously you're not going to want to put your cards in these, but it's just cool that it has those. And then of course it has a cardboard piece of cardboard. And then you've got the back here, some of the back artworks. I have a feeling that maybe also that these artworks are maybe the postcards, what the postcards look like. Let's see if I recognize, we're looking for a Dragonite one. No, these are different. Anyways, very, very cool. Amazing artwork here. Like, I honestly haven't even taken a chance to just sit here and look at the artwork. The artwork is amazing. Lapras and Tentacruel playing with Meryl and Magikarp and Dragonite in the background. Yeah, I think these are the postcards. Yeah, these these, these are, I think these are the postcards. Let me look on this backside. Uh, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, those are the postcards. So, yeah, these uh, the inside of these show you what the postcards would look like. But let's just sift through the cards real quick. I want to be really careful here um, because I have had this stuff together for a long time and I don't really break it out often to look at it just because it's in really, really good condition. Um, it even has the original cellophane pack that all of the Southern Islands cards came from. These could very well grade um, PSA 10 for some of them, maybe. Now, sliding in and out of this cellophane pack, probably not ideal for the cards, but... We're just gonna do it anyways, and this will probably be the last time that I show these on here. But, uh, oh yeah, and these aren't PSA 10. They've, they've chipped a little bit just from the cellophane. So let's, let's go ahead and take a look at these. You've got Mew, absolutely gorgeous Mew. That's probably everybody's favorite. You've got Pidgeot. And this Pidgeot one has, uh, let's see if it'll focus in on it. Oh, so another thing that I need to mention before I forget is these are all connected. Really, really cool thing about that. So Mew, I guess, would be over here. But yeah, all of these are connected. There's Pidgeot. Here we got Onyx. They're just absolutely beautiful. In fact, how do I set these? I need to set these down in a better way. It's the best way that I can show these. In fact, we should probably go back to front. That way I can set them down. All right, we got Primeape. Primeape and Venomoth. You can see the little, uh, where the set symbols would be. We have a little tropical uh, tree. There's Vileplume. Oh, and Vileplume has a gnarly swirl down there, too. Lickitung. Hanging on a tree. And so it sounds to me... It sounds to me like all of it is cohesive. Like, the postcards match the cards, match the binder. Yeah, that's, that's epic. So th these cards are literally just looking closer at what's in the postcards, essentially. And vice versa. Beautiful. Absolutely. This one has a swirl too. Absolutely gorgeous. 
Exeggutor. Lapras. Hanging out with Dratini. Then you got Meryl and Magikarp. Oh, we got a Swirl on Meryl too. All these should have Swirls just because they're basically full Cosmo Hollow patterns. Imagine if they made reverses, you know, from some of the sets like that, dude. It would have been absolutely bonkers. Uh, here's Tentacruel with Dragonite in the background. Probably one of the best Tentacruel cards of all time. This is an epic Butterfree card. Definitely gives me uh, Butterfree vibes. The OG Butterfree card just is very beautiful and vibrant, just like this one. Butterfree would make for an absolutely gnarly alternate art. All right, we got Jigglypuff chilling, being derpy as heck. We got the Ladyba. And I'm guessing Togepi is going to come up here soon because I have another pack that has the Togepi in it. I don't know why they would be separated. I think this is the complete set right here. Raticate with the Slowpoke behind there. It's got to be Togepi. Oh, the Ivysaur is so good. Look at that Ivysaur. Pardon my hand shaking. Oh, there it is. There's the Togepi. Man, look at that hollow. It's so glossy. It's literally like a mirror. It's reflecting. That's crazy. Oh, and then back to Onyx in those last ones. So I'm going to very, very carefully put these back in the cellophane. Mommy? There's just a tad bit of silvering on the edges. But I think that's just enough where it would just dock it to a, to a 9 or an 8. Just from that alone. Either way, I'm not getting these graded. They're just really, really cool. And let's see. I got some extras over here. What's I don't know what that's all about. All right. Going back in the cellophane pack. There we go. Like it never even left. It's important for me to keep this stuff together because it's, it was already in the cellophane pack. I'm just like... Why not just go ahead and seal it all back up? And there we go. That's ready to put back in there. And uh, let's see. It looks like I paired some extra cards with it that I probably bought from a collection at some point or something. Let's see what we've got in here for some Southern Islands. Let's see what we got. We got Togepi. Let's see if we can find any swirls on these, on these extra duplicates. Uh, we got Ladybug. Oh, there's a gnarly swirl right there. We got, uh, oh, we got Jigglypuff. So we got some non-hollows. But, dude, we have, like, another another set almost of the hollows. That's amazing. Okay, let's look at, uh, see if Meryl's packing any swirls for us. No, no swirls on Meryl. Okay. And Vileplume. Let's see. Oh, gnarly swirl right in the smack dab middle of Vileplume. That is sick. Oh, and a swirl above Vile Plume, dude. That's sick. Yo, awesome. Awesome. Anyways, super iconic set. Um, if you ever find one of these, I would urge you to hold on to it. Uh, this is a piece of Pokemon history right here. Uh, and there was the Japanese release. You could probably find those for cheaper. A lot of the vintage Japanese products are do tend to be cheaper. Of course, there are always those products that end up being even more valuable in Japanese. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't go out looking for one of these brand new anytime soon, but I will say if you do really want one, if this product pops out to you and looks like something that you would definitely be interested in, um, I would highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Anyways, let's see. I'm trying to figure out the best way to put this back in here. I feel like maybe turn... Well, I don't want the cards to come out, that's for sure. Maybe turn this, hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna flip it over just because I don't want the binder, the binder side to like, I'm gonna see if this is any better, guys. You are literally watching me just be, just derping out. Okay, let's see. Between almost tearing my theme deck the other day and then this today. Okay. That's a little bit better. I feel like that's a little bit better. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to put this away. Um, very cool, though. Just wanted to show you guys a little piece of Pokemon history. 
it's just awesome. It's just so awesome. And um, don't know what that is. It looks like something flying in the distance. But uh, yeah, this is just, I was just looking for any little bloopers or anything weird on here. Yeah, this is a piece of history though, guys. If you ever see one of these, I would definitely grab it up. Uh, this is not something that I would sell if I found another. But um, yeah, it's just like a super, super underrated subset. Why is that important? Why would I talk about Southern Island specifically today? Uh, just because people coming to the hobby probably are never gonna know about this stuff. Some stuff is super niche or super old. That's just, it's never gonna be relevant again. It would be really cool to see Pokemon make another kind of Southern Island subset. Something really cool that came out with a binder set like this and a set of cards that came with it. That would be really cool. Of course, if Pokemon did that, it would. if it was a really good set, it would be very expensive. So, but uh, you know, I've talked about the gold stars and crystals and first edition base and first edition shining. And there are so many like subset cards that are like grail cards to me um, in sets that are just grail sets in general, like Aquapolis and Sky Ridge. But this is also one of those subsets that I just think is really good. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if down the road, I did want to get a graded set of the Southern Islands cards. But uh, yeah, that's all I got. Just a short one today. I know I rarely ever make videos short, but uh, I hope you guys appreciate it. And let me know what you think of this subset. Did you know about it? Had you ever seen it before? Um, and would you cop? All right, guys. Peace out. Thanks for watching.